Hello world, welcome to Curiosity the Science Show. This is episode number 44 for the June 2023. Uh, let's see the main developments, the field of science, technology and medicine for the last month and also what to look forward uh, for the month of June. Today is the first of the June. I'm talking to you here from Bathinda in Punjab, Central University of Punjab. So coming first is about the June. Etymology, that's how the, the show starts, right? The June comes from Latin, uh, Euniores, that is the, the, the word which came from, right? The Latin origin word. Uh, uh, it means young people. So uh, the June is the month of young people, right? May we have seen is something like a bud opening, right? The spring. So it's much more, it's like a teenager. And this is also quite related. This is more into the young, um, you know, uh, intellect isn't it young people so well the the the, the show the, the curiosity is also targeted towards the young population uh, though we cover uh, stories across the sciences and also some of the humanities stories especially psychology and um, you know economics we do feature and in florigraphy june is a month of roses you know so that is a language of flower the secret language in cryptography and cryptology uh, this is known as florigraphy you know, each month I will have one flower. So if I say like uh, roses, that means that there is a hidden meaning in roses. That is the month of June. So the cover image of uh, this month's story, by the way, all the stories that I'm going I'm to cover in this episode, you can see that in the show notes uh, with the clickable link to the original study. Okay. So the cover image of this one is uh, a fantastic news that happened last month. It's about a man was completely paralyzed in Switzerland, he could able to walk again thanks to the wonderful world of sciences, friends. So he had a spinal cord injury. Of course, if you have any injury with your spinal cord and if that uh, the cord breaks, then you're completely paralyzed, you know. So now that what happened is that mm, since 2011, he lost the complete movement, hips down. Now he can walk again. Uh, the reason is that there is something called digital bridge that connects from his brain to the spinal cord bypassing the injured tissue. That is a fantastic uh, a new development that has published uh, uh, last month by a Swiss team in Nature. That's, you know, that actually opens up a vast vista of uh, such development for all the paralyzed people around the world. Uh, you know, friends, science is coming to your rescue. You know, science, of course, need a lot of funding and a lot of hard work and a lot of youngsters need to choose science as their field, uh, you know, uh, a career choice, isn't it? Then only things will move forward. And uh, related to this story, the digital bridge story is Elon Musk, you know, so I'm not a big fan of him, but he has a very interesting uh, venture called Neuralink. So Neuralink has applied for FDA permit for clinical trial, you know, phase one, two, three clinical trials for an implantable brain chip. And FDA has allowed for uh, the clinical trial. That is the very interesting story, you know. Another related story is the importance of napping for memory consolidation for uh, children. So if you have young children at home, uh, you know, that's what science, is say, uh, science say is that you should actually allow them, encourage them to take more naps because that allows uh, the memory consolidation that is very good for the brain. And also if you are a school administrator, uh, consider, especially for the young children, you know, uh, consider giving napping time for the children. That's very, very important. And another brain related story is about a brain activity decoder uh, has been developed. It's, uh, it's based on AI model, you know, so the brain scan given to the AI can give you, you know, the, the activity, whatever is going on in your brain to the text. Fantastic, isn't it? That That is something like a science fiction. I couldn't even believe this story. So whatever is going on in people's mind, it's like a lie detector. Of course, the lie detector, uh, current, uh, current day, the lie detector, the uh, polygraph is a pseudoscience concept, okay? Of course, many judicial systems around the world do trust the polygraph, but polygraph is really not a science at all. But this gives a very interesting uh, new clues on detecting lies. 
what people are saying is real or not real so whatever is happening in your brain this machine can decode it fantastic isn't a continuous stream of text again it's ai based system very interesting of course you have to uh, be a little bit skeptical about it we have to wait and watch how the system develops better now ai related news uh, the study finds that this chat gpt outperforms the physicians in providing high quality empathetic response to the questions so that is very very interesting so of course there's a community called reddit i'm a big fan of reddit so reddit has several sub community one of the sub community is known as ask reddit r slash ask reddit uh, and of course there's another very interesting uh, community is called ask docs doc doctor you know so if you have any medical related question you can simply post a question in ask doc uh you know the, the subreddit and then qualified doctors will try to help you out so the community is all about helping each other you know so uh, uh you know this analysis picked up certain questions from ask doc subreddit community and then put the questions to the chat gpt versus the normal doctor the physician and then the responses that the real doctors were asked to grade it and what the real doctors graded is that the responses of chat gpt is a lot more empathetic you know that is very very interesting right and they preferred that uh, the answers from the chat gpt 79 percentage of the time it's not only more empathetic but also more accurate you know so that is that's very very interesting uh, study that came out later uh, this month Okay, so that is uh, coming from the UCSD, University of California at Santiago, right? Pretty interesting, isn't it? Third story is that the study has found that teens who use cannabis recreationally are two to four times likely to develop psychiatric disorders like depression and suicidal tendency compared with those teens who don't use cannabis at all. So that is very, very interesting. It's a regression-based study. It's not simple correlation Co uh, means co causation and you know, of course that uh, confounding needs to be factored in so this study did factor in the confounding too so that is very very interesting so uh, especially in the US so I, I do listen a lot of post podcast from the US and gummy candies for example are, are sold everywhere containing cannabis you know now you have to be uh, thinking twice about buying these recreational cannabis especially in those countries where cannabis is legal for recreational use like uh, 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 you know like uh, netherlands or uh, united states you know uh, not here in india of course it's illegal uh, it's very interesting the study says that uh, you know so uh, yeah that the teenage people who takes cannabis are more uh, likelier to become depressed and have suicidal tendencies now another very interesting story is about lysergic acid diethylamide lsd lsd is also a drug a hard drug you know so it helps uh, to learn by increasing uh, neuronal plasticity that's very very interesting so especially those people having learning difficulties so you know clinical trials can uh, is possible with in the in the light of this study isn't it Fourth story is that the surge of gamma ray activity in the brains of dying patients that suggests that the, whatever the near death experience that many people are talking about is all due to dying brain tissues. Exciting, isn't it? So many people who survived the blink of the death uh, usually report seeing light in the end of a tunnel. You know, so those kind of uh, you, uh, what is that? Uh, end of life experiences you know so that near death uh, incidences or experiences so maybe that's all because of the gamma ray increased gamma ray in the brain because of the uh, necrosis of the neurons you know the death of the cells in the in the neurons so that is very very interesting study fifth story is that the the regular walks strengthen the connections in and between the brain networks you know so that is again uh, adding on to the growing evidence of linking exercise for slowing the onset of uh, alzheimer's disease or neurodegenerative diseases you know so that's very very interesting regular walks friends that can you can slow down the, the onset of alzheimer's uh, you know uh, 
if if you provide this uh, if you if you do this kind of regular exercise especially regular walks very interesting again another exercise related story is about the cancer patients so usually cancer patients are advised not to do exercise especially the strenuous exercise even moderate exercise but not anymore what the new study says is that uh, you know the short bouts of light to moderate level exercise will increase immunoglobulin circulating immunoglobulins in the blood to fight the cancer cells you know so that is very very good uh, for uh, uh, this cancer destroying uh, cells you know so that is that's very very interesting isn't it so b cell and t cell isn't it not merely the immunoglobulin that increases this coming the study is coming from the finland so if you're a cancer patient do discuss this uh, you know the uh, increasing your exercise with your physician and take a uh, informed decision you know so that's very very important eighth story oh well seven stories again to do with the, the cancer the immunotherapy drugs and uh, this is about the, uh, the chemotherapy you know the chemotherapy drugs reaches the blood brain barrier using new uh, way of the intervention so this one is about using the micro bubble with ultrasound so ultrasound creates a lot of micro bubbles and this micro bubble will opens up the blood brain barrier so that these chemotherapeutic drugs will reach the brain cell how exciting is it isn't it so you are using the ultrasound to excite this blood to form super tiny micro uh, you know micro bubble and this micro bubble will expand this tiny vessel to increase this blood flow into the brain so earlier of course that is the biggest uh, disadvantage of uh, any of this drug i mean it will not work for the brain tumor uh, one of the brain tumor is known as glioblastoma you know the star shaped cell that is anchoring this neuron uh, if the cancer happens to it it quickly spreads around the brain and uh, survival period of this glioblastoma is in months you know it's one of the deadliest brain cancer and this particular intervention is used for the glioblastoma so patients with uh, patients of glioblastoma you know so science is doing wonders friends you know it can uh, science can uh, rescue lives you know that's amazing isn't it eight stories about air pollution Air pollution from oil and gas production alone is responsible for 77 billion US dollar. You know, uh, uh, that is actually coming from the, the, uh, the uh, annual US health damage. So this much damage it's actually doing on the health of the citizen. This study is only about the production, okay? It's not about the burning, okay? So it's only about the production, like the oil ridges and all. People who are working over there and also whatever the aftermath of the production of this uh, fossil fuel, you know? 77 billion francs, that is a huge number. Many countries, their net worth is less than this amount. Now, if you also include, uh, you know, the damages impacted by burning of this fossil fuel, it is 10 times more. Can you believe it? Uh, the figure is the IMF, the International Monetary Fund figure is 649 billion annually. You know, the damage by the burning of the fossil fuel. So it's, you know, the, uh, yeah, the new generation, uh, a sustainable lifestyle uh, should not be dependent on fossil fuel. You know, we have to actually, um, yeah, get rid of the fossil fuel, friends, for uh, fighting the climate change ninth story is about a coal power coal versus nuclear which gives radioactivity more i always thought it's nuclear that gives out the most the radioactive radioactive pollutants but no coal power creates much more many times more radioactivity than nuclear power so especially if you're living near to the coal uh, you know, core-based th uh, thermal power plant, or uh, if you're living near to the uh, logistic road or train way where they transport the core, you might be exposed to radioactivity. That is what this new study says. That's it's very alarming. You know, it's not really nuclear power. The core is 
accounting for much more radioactive decay you know so 10 stories that the making the first mission to mars everybody is talking about uh talking about one way ticket to mars right there is no way of coming back it's only one way well still uh, the nasa got millions of applicants that is what it says more than a million applicants tried for it to take this one way trip to mars well the new study says that if you make this trip to mars all female there is a huge advantage in terms of logistics you know because all female crew members require 26 percentage fewer calories 29 percentage less oxygen 18 percentage less water than all male crew so it's it's, uh, it's you know it makes sense to have females on board rather than male unlike the Apollo missions or male right so uh, if you're doing uh, this manned mission to Mars it's it makes more sense to have all female crew member it's very interesting that the females eat less but they live longer isn't it annual longevity i mean a global longevity if you look at that mean longevity figure females always exceeds the male so that means that if you eat less you might live longer exciting isn't it yeah so yeah i really like these stories you know and the female or of course if you if you take this the one zero eight zero thousand eighty day mission uh crewed by four women uh, crew members would need 1695 fewer kilogram of the food so every ounce matters in manned mission to moon or uh, mars isn't it it's very very exciting 11 stories about the fake news the new study published in nature they did the propensity to share the fake news which uh, a group of people are more prone for it so what it concludes is that uh, you know, most of the sharing of the fake news happens accidentally, not deliberate. So most people, uh, most often people simply read the dead, the headlines and then hit share button. They don't even bother to read the whole story or forget about looking the the quality, how good the quality of evidence is, you know. So they have this cognitive bias called JTC bias, jumping to conclusion bias without even looking at veracity of evidence or the source how good the source is is it is it a reliable source or not well this channel we i made a, a video a few years back about which sources are to be trusted medical sources so check out my channel for so many such interesting videos okay so instead of uh, checking this uh, source you know how good how reliable the source is or how good the evidence is just by looking some headline the hit share button so that is the main reason why the fake news is being spread you know it is mostly done by accidentally not really deliberate only very few people deliberately share the fake news and those people who deliberately share the fake news the study find that politically right uh, right wing people are more prone it's uh, we are talking about the american right wing it's an american study you know so yeah in america the right wing people are more prone for sharing fake news very interesting isn't it check out the story everything is in the uh, linked show notes okay this uh, uh, paper has been published in nature last month 12th story is that ancient humans may have stopped in arab arabia arab peninsula for at least 30,000 years you know out of Africa there has been two waves so in the first wave instead of spreading everywhere they simply took a stop in Arab for 30,000 years so 30,000 is kind of a, a, a long way isn't it because our own species has only around 300,000 years of history so it's it's a big amount of time 13 stories that the new research has found that almost half of all people who receive the knock on the head if you ever get a head injury damage could be permanent so especially the concussion in the brain the brain tissue uh, and the changes could have uh, how the brain communicate with each other potentially causing long-term symptoms like fatigue brain fog and cognitive impairments uh, the study is coming from cambridge university 
so yeah so brain friends this area we really need to protect and also uh, you know the, the childhood trauma you know if you ever been subjected to trauma for on your brain the effect could be long lasting and also the sports you know beware of this concussion is very common across the field sports like rugby and uh, football so beware of this risk take calculated risk especially also for uh, you know martial arts like boxing you know people who are getting hit on their face of course the, the brain region chance of getting concussion in the brain is also quite high isn't it so beware of all those risks 14th story is that the scientists have found the link between photosynthesis and fifth state of matter it's coming from university of chicago so you might wonder what is this fifth state of matter is it's called bose einstein condensate you know so it's a state of matter that you get if these bosons are super cooled near absolute zero absolute zero is uh, minus 279 degrees celsius or zero kelvin you, no one can reach that temperature you know but near to that if you actually cool down this boson boson is uh, one of the uh, fundamental particles of uh, uh, you know physics in the elementary physics isn't it the, the standard model of particle physics boson is energy carrying particle it's coming from uh, you know a bose isn't it so it's our own scientist uh, physicist isn't it so uh, yeah uh, boson is basically it's energy carrying particle that is something like uh, uh, the particle uh, you know they exchange this boson in the form of exchanging this energy right so yeah of course, there are so many interesting particles here. Particle world itself is quite substantive, right? And now this fifth state of matter, what is this connection? So it's a very interesting that I really like the way they wrote this story. It's a, it's a one of the best popular article I have ever read with lots of interesting uh, analogy. So one of the analogy is that if you are on a long, uh, you know, traffic blockade, there are so many uh, cars are there and the the first car moves you know and then second car third car fourth car so that is very very slow and very inefficient way of transferring energy from one end to another end how about when the first car moves the entire car moves uh, you know in a sequential manner that is a lot more efficient way so that exactly is this fifth state of matter how it works in photosynthesis it's all about the electron transport chain in the the membranes of the uh, chloroplast isn't it so that is that's a very interesting analogy that i read in this uh, article please check out the original article and the 15th story the last story of this month's episode is the the body type may give certain athletes an edge over other athletes depending on where these competitions are being held for example olympics you know next olympics is in france i'm looking forward to it i might go for it you know 2024 i have to go to paris so maybe i'll, I'll go and check out you know if i if i'm really lucky to get a ticket of course and uh, yeah so uh, i don't really want to spend uh, my entire life's worth for to get a seat but i'll have to think about it right coming from a country like india of course you know it, tickets are going to be very expensive anyway I'm, I'm really looking forward to it so this story is about uh, you know depends on where these matches are being held for example olympics in a very cool places if if the uh, such competitions are being held in cooler climate then uh, marathoners with stockier build and shorter limbs you know lug if the leg is shorter, they have advantage in colder uh, uh, weather, colder places. And if these uh, matches are being held in warmer uh, places, then people with a very long limb and very thin, tall and lean runners have advantage for high endurance sports, something like Ironman events, so Ironman triathlon. So Ironman triathlon is around 2.5 miles of cycling. Then um, uh, 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 more than I think 120 miles of uh, cycling. You know, uh, one point uh, um, 2.5 miles of swimming, uh, 120 miles of cycling, and then full marathon. 
you know so that is that's very high enduring high endurance game isn't it so yeah so it depends on body type and depends on the climate so there are advantage and disadvantages it's very very interesting isn't it uh, coming to the observances uh, to be looked forward to in this month the june third june is cycle day and also the best day to watch mercury you know the morning planet isn't it morning star it's a, it's a planet of course mercury smallest in our solar system fourth of june is the full moon of june it's called strawberry moon you know of the almanac isn't it the tribal almanac follows each month with a, a full moon with a, a certain uh, you know certain connotations so this month it's known as strawberry moon fifth of course is environment day un world environment day 5th of june and this year's theme is how to fight plastic pollution you know so if you're interested please contribute on fighting the plastic pollution uh, and also giving talks about plastic pollution uh, in the groups you know for example your alumni network or writing some articles how to fight plastic pollution i'm giving a talk in a university in chandigarh on 5th of june they invited me so i'll i'll be talking about uh, how to lead a lifestyle with uh, uh, zero dependency on plastics so you can check it out 7th of june is a food safety day 8th is oceans day 10th is moon saturn conjunction same frame you will get moon and saturn together on 10th night 14th is blood donor day i'm proud to say that i donate one unit at least of my blood on every single birthday every single year i do that you can do it too friends blood donation saves lives if you are not a doctor and if you haven't even did this cpr or any first aid these are other two ways to save life you can do this you can donate the blood to save lives 14th is also moon jupiter conjunction moon and jupiter in the same frame 21st of june is solstice so the month of june is for me it's a solstice month you know so solstice is a point uh, where the it's you know the uh, the the earth is farthest from the sun so basically uh, it's a month uh, it's you know it's it's a day in which uh, here in northern hemisphere we are going to get the longest day and shortest night just opposite in southern hemisphere uh, of course in southern hemisphere it is winter right now you know though people are very less in southern hemisphere isn't it so today morning i searched out i looked up it's it's around 10 percentage of world population is in southern hemisphere countries are also very less so 90 percentage of human population is in northern hemisphere you know yeah and uh, 22nd is moon venus conjunction so we have three conjunctions in this month the first one is uh, uh, moon saturn conjunction then moon jupiter conjunction and then here on 20, uh, 22nd it's moon venus conjunction 29th is the international day for tropics yes we are living in a tropical country here in india it's a tropical right especially in the southern india it's tropical uh, yes now coming to the last section of curiosity is about the opportunities there are several opportunities please check out the show notes for the application form and further details Mary Curie Fellowship is open now. It's a prestigious postdoc fellowship for go doing postdoc in the EU, European Union. Of course, Mary Curie also have PhD uh, a fellowship. Uh, recently, I came to know, of course, through the Reddit, that Mary Curie is no more that um, extremely, uh, you know, prestigious. So the the amount the Mary Curie Fellowship pays is kind of low. In German point of view, you know, a German student usually earn around 4,500 euros per month. While Mary Curie will pay only half of it. You see, that is, that's very strange, isn't it? Though Mary Curie is very prestigious. No, uh, amount is kind of less. Yeah. There is another opportunity called Australia India Student Exchange Program, especially if you are a, a a PhD scholar you can apply for it to do a part of your PhD in Australia 13th October is the deadline while Mary Curie the deadline is 30th of September program manager position is open now for Royal Irish Academy 
everybody can apply they are not you need not be an irish citizen you know it's open for the globe anybody can apply if you are interested in this science or governance salary is up to 52112 uh, euros you know deadline is 8th of june there is a very interesting summer school the right to higher education in global south we were just talking about the global south the southern hemisphere isn't it and well the term global south is not merely about the southern hemisphere it's also about uh, you know poorer countries of the world including us we we belongs to the global south while not all southern hemisphere countries are uh, poor exception would be australia new zealand you know they are very high income country hdi is extremely high isn't it so global south though we are uh, you know in the northern hemisphere we belongs to the global south so yeah uh you know right to higher education global south horizons debates and challenges that summer school is open the deadline is 16th of june please do apply for it global young academy has a new call called sasha interdisciplinary grant to facilitate the development of curiosity driven blue skies research i'm a big fan of this blue skies curiosity driven research you might have observed that in uh, curiosity show and also many videos that i release in this uh youtube channel you know so this grant of uh, global young academy i'm very happy that gya is releasing these kind of grants uh you know uh this is only for the low and middle income countries and also it's a twinning program with high income countries so you need a uh, partners you know a very great envision of this program but unfortunately the grant value is very very less only 10000 euro which is insubstantial to execute anything uh, which is of high quality you know in 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 the research science need money friends a lot of money and lot of manpower and lot of commitment is what is needed in science okay anyway if you are interested if you have some very interesting idea where you have partners in uh, global north rich countries uh, yeah but though it is only 10000 euros apply for it the 28th of june is the deadline Indo Russian bilateral program is still open the deadline is approaching 15 June Embo Global Investor Network call is also open 30th June and of course several junior research fellowship and SR of and project vacancy score i keep on sharing those in the facebook group please check out in the show notes for the link to our facebook group so before going i want to share once again this is my new book and i'm offering this book in a reduced price of 435 if you order through the link in the show notes you know so that's it i wish you all very productive and happy june ahead you know and i'll see you soon in yet another episode for the month of july until then goodbye